complete blood count is uh, perhaps the most frequently requested investigation both both in uh, outpatient as well as inpatient clinical practice i've just highlighted uh, seven important components of complete blood count and you can see that i am i'm not going to discuss about mchc which is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration mch which is the mean cell hemoglobin or the mean corpuscular hemoglobin and the red blood cell count because this is not used in clinical practice and some laboratories have even removed these parameters in routine complete blood count uh, reports now you can see the normal values of the uh, component of complete blood count which i have described hemoglobin primarily detects anemia and you know that the normal range is slightly lesser for female in view of the physiological blood loss and the continuous process of red cell turnover which is higher in women but it doesn't tell about the cause of anemia pat cell volume roughly remembering it as three times the hemoglobin percentage it actually tells about the uh, concentration of red blood cells in the plasma so when the plasma concentration goes down or when the red blood cell mass increases the pat cell volume increases so clinically also it is uh, used in situations of uh, hemoconcentration or when you suspect increased in the red cell mass mean corpuscular volume which is the mean uh, volume of the hemoglobin of these um, red blood cells it's uh, a very important component of complete blood count because when a patient has anemia the first test you are supposed to look at in the complete blood count is the mean corpuscular volume so anemia is classified based on mean corpuscular volume if it is less than 80 you call it as microcytic anemia if it is in a normal range you call it as normocytic anemia and if it's higher than 100 you call it as macrocytic anemia so it's a very critical import uh, critical component of complete blood count i would just add uh, this red red cell distribution width which is not often reported by many uh, laboratories but adds value because um, it gives you information if the red size of the red red cells are uniform so if they are of grossly varying sizes as you get an anisocytosis in iron deficiency anemia and many other disorders this red cell distribution width will be higher than normal so it's a good tool uh, where you can actually predict the changes you expect in a peripheral smear total count as i've mentioned there informs about uh, leukopenia or leukocytosis and you evaluate or decide to just observe based on the clinical picture the differential count primarily tells you in the setting of leukocytosis so the differential count may not be that relevant when the uh, total count is normal except in um, a few cell a few uh, cells like eosinophils or monocytes Uh, generally it's relevant when the total count uh, increases so it just tells which cell line is dominating it could be a neutrophil domination or a lymphocyte domination eosinophil domination monocytes or basophil so uh, when certain cells dominate like um, especially eosinophils you give more importance to that and evaluate based on the cell type and of course lymphocyte domination may give you some idea about hematological problems platelet count as i told in total count it just informs about the presence of thrombocytopenia or thrombocytosis and you decide on the evaluation based on the clinical picture you can see more videos in this channel